Hey, all you out there on the internet, I think you're there. I can't see you, but perhaps you can see me, or at least my hand. What I was talking about in the last video was the difference between in embedded processors and embedded control like Arduino versus a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi, and what comes in the mail, or let's say the email, but a spam to buy something called the photon. Well, I couldn't resist. The little photon looks like an Arduino. There, there we go. It looks sort of like an Arduino. In fact, the pins are numbered the same as an Arduino. It's got the same sort of little floor plan as, let's say, this here Arduino knockoff. This is the same smart Arduino. Now, uh, we don't get all excited about Arduino knock knockoffs in a negative way because Arduino is open source hardware, so anybody can copy it, and these guys are copying it. This is a copy of an Arduino Nano, I believe. This is an Arduino Fio, still in the case, never opened it. And this is an Intel Edison, which has been doctored up uh, by Intel with this nice circuit board to look like an Arduino, even though the Edison's right here. We explained all that last time. So I got the Photon, and the Photon came in this nice little box, and it came with a breadboard and some parts, so you could start using it. And I thought, gee, why don't I make a vid about the Photon and how cool it is and whatnot. And what I discovered is that the Photon is a lot cooler than I could ever have possibly imagined. And I'll get into that. Now, when you get your Photon and you look at it and you see it's got a USB port, the first thing you may be inclined to do is to take your USB from your computer, plug her in, and program it using your regular old Ar I Arduino IDE environment. What you're going to find right away is that does not work. The Arduino IDE environment does not include a setting to program a, a photon. As you can see, there's no Arduino called a photon in the settings here, so I can't even select a board. Well, if I'm kind of clever, maybe what I'll try is I'll try to select something like I, Arduino Mini and try to load a program onto it, and what's going to happen is you're going to get an error. Um, you cannot program the photon from the Arduino IDE environment. So what do you use then? What you use to program one of these is something that they call the particle dev uh, in the development environment right there, particle dev. Now, there's a version that you can run locally, which I have got here. And uh, you'll notice that the, the code looks very similar. If you look at it, there's a setup block. There's a loop block, just like Arduino. And then there's individual uh, modules that you can write and call. Um, but uh, you've got something that looks different. You've got all of these uh, icons along the side, which have different commands that you can execute. And what you're going to rapidly find is that you cannot program the photon directly from your computer. You need to have this development environment talking to the internet, to the photon servers, which then upload the firmware to your photon. That's a different model altogether. Now you may say, why do I have to do that? I don't even want to do that. I don't. I want my computer to be, up, uh, to be controlling my Arduino. Well, first of all, this is not an Arduino. Secondly, this is an IoT device, and it needs to talk to their servers in order to work at all. It's got to talk to their servers. Now, that sounds kind of like Big Brother's watching you, but uh, look at all the let's look at all the cool things you can do there. So I've gone onto a web page that's got what's called uh, particle build.particle.io, and I've got an environment here that looks oddly enough just like the one that I have in this window over here. And this window is running a local thing called particle dev, and this one is running an internet one, uh, which is uh, at this location, build.particle.io, that build, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as it turns out, I can write this program on the on the web. And I can press a button, and I can upload this to my photon. Let's watch that happen. I'm going to look at the photon down here, and we're going to see what's we're going to see something going on. Let's just see. We're going to see something going on with this thing. You'll notice there's a light flashing, a little blue light. The little blue heartbeat says it's connected to the internet. Internet. Now, when I build this particular app and flash and upload it, you're going to see it starts flicking. It turns to magenta, meaning it's it's adopting some new code. Now it's reconnecting to the internet. There we go, green light flashing says it's on the internet, and now it's back on the internet with the heartbeat. Now there are little LEDs flashing, 
there's a little blue one over here and there's a little red one over here and that's executing the program that uh, I set up here and this is a demo program and let's see what happens basically if I cover this photo cell that little red light lights up if I uncover the photo cell the little red light goes off cover it up it goes on cover it up take my fan off it goes off well that's not so interesting any Arduino in the world can do that what is interesting so when I go back to the program that I've loaded onto this this is this is a demo program I haven't modified this in any way um, as you can see the LED is looking for an LED connected to D0 and then there's the board LED the little blue one on the board that, that you can flip on and off and the photo resistor connected to A0 um, you set the pin modes if you go down you set the uh, power to uh, to high which is something that's not very Arduino-ish. Um, that's interesting. I'm turning power onto something. Um, I then flash the board LED, and then uh, I'm doing analog reads in the photo resistor. And what I'm trying to do is what they try to do here is they calibrate the photo resistor, so they figure out uh, what type of resistance they see when there's light. You're supposed to put your hand over this when you turn it on. Put your hand over it. Take your hand off. Uh, they they figure out a value for the resistance when the light beam is shining right on it. That's the intact value, and then they uh, take a value for when you've broken the light beam. And now they know what those two values are. Okay, let's go through this loop. What I'm seeing here is I'm going to take the voltage on the photoresistor every every iteration, and I'm going to see if it's above a threshold uh, value. If the beam has been previously broken and the threshold has changed. That means that it was previously broken, meaning the light, I was holding my hand over it, and now I've uncovered it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish uh, something called uh, beam status, and I'm going to say the status of beam status is intact. The rest of this digital write turns the LEDs on and off, uh, the delays, and it, so it basically flashes the LEDs. This is standard Arduino stuff. This one is not. That's interesting. So what Spark is giving us, or the particle people are giving us, is a, is a function called spark.publish. And there's a whole array of functions that they provide. And what this is doing is talking to their server. So I've created a, an event called beam status that's on their server. And when I take my hand away from the photodiode, I'm going to say that the beam status is now intact, meaning the, 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 uh, the light is now shining directly on that photo cell. If, for some reason, we go down here, we suddenly cover the photo cell. If we have previously broken the beam already, we're not going to report it over and over again. But if the beam had not been broken, and now it is, I'm going to publish an event to beam status, and I'm going to say that it is now broken. That's interesting because what I'm doing is I'm talking with this, with this particular uh, function. I am talking directly to the Spark server, and I'm saying I'm created an event. I call the event beam status, and I'm saying that the beam is now broken. Now, this is a very simple-minded thing. All I'm doing is putting my hand or putting something over this little photo cell and saying that the, the, it's, the, the beam is cut or the beam is not cut. But imagine what you could do with that. Wow, you could make a, uh, a burglar alarm with that, or you could, you know, an intrusion alarm of some form. You could, you could make something that detects when it's night or day and have the sprinklers go on when it's day and off when it's night. You could turn on and off night lights. There's all kinds of things you could do with that because once you're talking to their server, and an interesting thing is as well, once you're talking to their server and the server knows it, anywhere in the world you can monitor the status of this thing. So in fact, if I was kind of crazy, I could hook up my little my li my little photon here in a way that when I cover this up, it talks to the server, and then over somewhere over the internet far away, there's another there's another uh, particle uh, photon that's also talking to the server, and I can control it. So I could cover my hand here and have a LED go on somewhere else in the world that's on the internet, literally anywhere else in the world that's on the internet. Isn't that interesting? Remote control of all sorts of things. All this is a very simple example, but imagine what you could do. Okay, let's try to get that moray pattern out of there. I'm going to defuzz fuzz up the screen a little bit so I don't have that uh, terrible moray pattern. In any case, what we got here is the uh, uh, the 
particle dashboard for this particular photon. Every device can have its own dashboard. And what we're doing is we're posting an event to this dashboard. I can post any event I want, but in the program that we uh, looked at, there's an event called beam status, and that beam status is a piece of data associated with it. And the message for the data either says intact, that actually says the word intact, or broken. Uh, so here's the beam of light shining right on that solar cell, on that photocell rather, it's not a solar cell, it's a cadmium sulfide cell, and it says data is intact. Okay, cool. If I cover that, data is broken, covering it with my finger. Let it go, data is intact. Now, what are you seeing here? What you're seeing is the data is coming in, actually when I turned it, it's broken because it's no longer in the light beam, right? Intact, broken, intact, broken. Okay, way cool. Actually, let me unplug this. What you're actually seeing here, then, is the uh, the data from this is going over the internet to their server and being posted here in this log. I could put any event name I want. I can have any data associated with the event name, and it gets posted to the server, and then you can use this any way you desire. I could actually send this data to another photon somewhere else in the world to do something with it. So, for instance, let's say this was sensing daytime. I could turn on a light somewhere else in the world when it's daytime here or turn it off when it's nighttime. I could actually switch something with the wave of a hand and make it appear magical. I could be in the audience and I could change something on a stage. Um, all sorts of things you can do with this thing. Now the Photon people have an app called Tinker. And uh, this is the code for Tinker. I did not write it. This is on the website. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Tinker and I am going to burn it onto my onto this here photon source. And I'm just going to click this right up there. And as you see, in a moment, there we go. It's burning Tinker onto there. Now the LEDs are going to go off uh, because I'm not using the LED in the photo cell anymore. Now it's reconnecting. All right, now we're talking to the internet. All right, so let's go down in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on my cell phone and I'm going to take start the particle web app and let's see what we can do with that. Now this development environment is on the particle website so I'm typing in here into my uh, Google Chrome web browser and this code is going on to their onto their servers and then when I upload it to the photon it's coming off the Wi-Fi it's not coming off uh, I could power this with any kind of battery or anything so uh, the uh, the the software, the firmware upload would be coming from through the Wi-Fi itself, uh, directly from their server. I have no way to upload software to this bad boy directly from my computer. And that's one of the uh, one of the interesting things. Now, if all that wasn't enough, I've got my iPhone here. Let's see if I get that in focus for you. Right, iPhone. And I've got a app called Particle. Let's tap that app. Okay, so I go to my, my iPhone, and now I can see that my device, which I've called Lepton, because after all, photons are leptons, are they not? And I'm going to go, and I'm going to say I want to control that guy, and I get a list of the pins on the photon. Now, I happen to know that I connected that LED. I reconnected it before. I think we connected it to... Uh, D0, right? So if I were to say D0, let's do a digital right. And right now it's low. Let's change it to high. Let's see if it dies. Uh, there we go. And you see the LED went on. I'm going to change it back to low again. Let me, now it says high. Let's see if I can, whoop, there we go. Low. It's low today. All right, let's try that again uh, for edit's sake. Okay, right now the diode's off. The state of pin D0 is digital low. I'm going to change it to digital high. There we go. Look at that. I'm controlling this from my iPhone. Now, it has a, it has a problem going back to low. There we go. Maybe because my thumb's too big. Low, high, low. How about we take the little diode that's on the board itself. That's on D7. I'm going to do digital right. D7. Right now it's low. Bing. I turned it to high. Look at that. So I can control the I.O. for my cell phone. Now, my cell phone is talking to this, but it's not talking to it directly through the Bluetooth it, or the Wi-Fi directly. It's talking to it through the particle server. So if I had this guy 
somewhere, anywhere, in my shoe, or I left it in my house, and I left it turned on, I left it on the web, and I went to Alaska, and I, because I don't live in Alaska, but say I went to Alaska, I could still control these pins from anywhere, anywhere in the world. I don't have to be right up next to it like that. And that's one of the beauties of the IoT environment. So as you can see, I can control this from an iPhone. I can control it with the code, um, with the code on the web. There. I can also control it from a command line. Let's go. And let's see what that looks like. All right. So the first thing I have to do is I have to be in super user mode, which for reasons I don't understand uh, uh, is required to run the particle software. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to I'm going to log in to my to my uh, to my photon here. So I'm going to say particle particle login. I'm behind the camera. All right. Particle call Hudson digital right. Take five. Go. Thinking about it. And it did. All right. So you see it turned on the little uh, D7 LED there, and I got a response of one, which is what that call returned. All right. Let me turn on the other LED. That's a D0. And turn on the red LED now. Particle call left on digital right D0. Hi. Go. There it goes. It goes on. Hey, look at that. I controlled that from the command line. Now so I've just scratched the surface of what uh, the photon is all about here. I showed you how to program it. I showed you, you can control it. How once you're on the internet, you can uh, program these things and control them from anywhere in the world. You could deploy them remotely and pick up the data from anywhere else. Um, this thing is uh, extremely flexible. I didn't even get into the software libraries that are available. Suffice to say, all the Arduino libraries are available plus more um, that enable you to uh, post events to the server. In addition, once you've uh, got a, uh, an idea for your product, these guys want to help you um, want to help you produce the product. Uh, they've got services for uh, marketing and development and helping you to create a supply chain, et cetera, et cetera, how to create your own private clouds. Uh, on their main site, they have examples of, uh, of people who have used their, their products to do things. Uh, uh, here's an, a, a, a pro, uh, photon embedded mattress. Frankly, I think that would be a little weird uh, having my biometrics taken while I sleep and have it forwarded to a server somewhere where I talk about a, something you wouldn't want to be hacked. Um, here's uh, uh, plant grow lights. Here's uh, aquarium uh, control. Here's uh, sprinkler control and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Basically, uh, with one of these things, you can sense and control something from anywhere in the world that you connect to the Wi-Fi. And that should really generate a lot of ideas in people. I mean, you know, one day, one morning, you wake up and you're showering and you'll come up with an idea for a uh, an inter internet connected shower system that makes sure the water temperature is right and, uh, and uh, monitors your water usage level if you live in a drought area like I do right now. In any case, uh, there's the uh, simple view of the photon. I hope it was useful to you. So hey, a big thank you from me uh, for watching and putting up with me. Uh, do appreciate it. I enjoy making the videos. I enjoy the interaction I get. If any of the energy I put into this uh, resonates with you at all, please do uh, just click the thumbs up. Oh, even click a thumbs down. I mean, just, just so I know you're out there. It's a little uh, strange doing this stuff by yourself, and you don't know who's listening or watching. So, uh, and, if, and if you care to, send a comment. I really would appreciate that. Anyway, you all have a good one. Uh, I'm Joe. See you later.